um, when I get ready to put a button on, the first thing I need to do is figure out what button I want. So I have all these buttons to choose from and I looked at them. What I really want to do for the for the the value of what it looks like, I want to kind of pick out some choices that match. Like so I don't necessarily want to take this color pink. I could, but if I choose one of these other colors that are in it, it kind of can pull that color out. So this one, this one has some yellow. That yellow is a little off. So, and then the brown kind of pulls out some of the the tan tones. So, I think I'm going to go with this one because it's a little bigger and it'll be easier to see when I do the demo on it. <clears throat> so, there we go. So that kind of pulls the lines. When you choose a button, it can kind of match with the lines and can pull some of the different colors into like the overall look. Okay, so once I choose my button, um, I need to determine what size it is. Now, if you buy it in a package, it will tell you on the package, but since you're just getting them out of my little bucket here and it doesn't tell you what size they are, you're gonna have to find out what size it is. So I'm going, you can use the little seam gauge to figure out the measurement. This is, um, this is a seven eighths inch button. See how between, between the end of the seam gauge and this point right there, that is, this is seven eighths measurement, okay? Between here and this point. Um, so this button right here is a seven eighths inch button. And that's, you know, that's, a pretty good size button. Um, sometimes you'll want smaller ones, bigger ones, depending on what you're doing. But, <clears throat> but the next thing that I want to do after I determine the size, then I could go the old fashioned way and figure out how to put it on here. But I'm going to show you a secret. That's a shortcut to get your button hole exactly the right size and, and not have to go to all the work of measuring and stuff. So there's a couple things that I'm going to do. So I'm going to take a piece of tape. This is the shortcut. It needs to be longer than the button. And I'm going to, so the, the size of the buttonhole should be, it should be the size, the width of the button plus the thickness. So I would add about an eighth of an inch for thickness. So this would be a one inch buttonhole. And that would be pretty easy to figure out, but figuring out where to put it on there to get it in the right place, this is the secret. To, um, this piece of tape is your secret. So make sure you follow, it's a half inch piece of tape. If you use a, a wider piece of tape, then it throws you off a little bit. So half inch tape, I'm gonna just put that right over the button and I'm going to stick it to the table like this. Okay, then I'm going to use, you can, this one doesn't have to be a fabric marker. The best ones that I found to do this onto the tape is a gel pen, a pen with gel ink. So I'll have some of those available in the classroom too. So I'm gonna mark, and the ones I have are black, but I'm using a red one right now, because that's my grading pen. Okay, and then you're gonna put a little mark on the edge of the table, right where, like over the edge of the button, where the mark is, and then over on this side, same. Okay, right where it hits the table, where the tape hits the table. Okay, and then this goes like this. Okay. Now, one thing I want you to notice is that the edge of the tape is going right through the center of the button. Now, sometimes what I see students do is they'll have their piece of tape and they just stick it over the top and that throws their measurements off. They try to mark it from the middle and, and it works, but it doesn't work as well. So make sure when you stick this down that you stick it right over the center of the button. So the edge of the tape is going exactly at the center of the button. Okay. Okay, so here's my mark. So now I have a piece of tape that has three marks right on the edge with gel ink from your gel pen. What I need to do next is uh, sample buttons to get the buttonholes the right size. Okay, so next I'm gonna be making three test buttonholes on scraps to see how well the fabric, um, how well the buttonhole looks and see if I'm doing it right and see if it fits the button. So the main thing is, is I wanna make sure that the button fits through the buttonhole well and that the size is good. So I don't want you to put your first buttonhole directly onto your bag because then if you mess it up, you're gonna to have to start your bag all over 
and that saves that just causes a lot of problems for you so so I'm gonna just take a scrap of this piece you do want to kind of simulate like the thickness the same thickness as what your bag is gonna look like or like the same thickness that your bag has because if you try to stitch like if I do a buttonhole just onto one single layer of this then it's going to be a little hard to tell what it's going to look like on the thickness. If you don't have a scrap of your own fabric, then you can uh, go to the scrap bucket and find something. Try to try to simulate the same thickness though, as what your what your end products. I'm going to just take this piece of tape. Now here's the tricky part. The buttonhole is not going to be the exact length between here and here. It's going to be just a tiny bit smaller. So I want you to look at this. You're, ju you're just going to place it somewhere. On here I showed you where to place it and I'll show you again. But on here we're just going to place it anywhere. And I'm going to take this. Okay, get close up on this. Okay, and I'm going to just draw a line next to the edge of the tape that goes across like this. Okay, from end to end. Now, on the buttonhole, if you remember, the width of the button should be the width plus, I'm just gonna grab one of these. So it's the width of the button plus the thickness of the button. And this added, so when the tape went on, it added the thickness here and here. So there's two thicknesses. Um, in this length. So I need to reduce it down just a tiny bit. So instead of marking it right here where that mark is, I'm going to just go to the inside of that to add my end. So the inside of this mark and the inside of this mark, and that should make my buttonhole perfect. Now I can, I'm not prone, and then I'm gonna mark the middle. So when you're finished, I'll take that off and I'm gonna turn this into a capital I with a line through it. Okay, so it looks like a capital I and then there's a line through the middle that shows me where the center of the button is. Okay, when you're threading your machine, um, there is a little hole on the end of your uh, like bar on the bobbin case right there. There's a little tiny hole. And usually we don't thread that. The only time we thread it is for buttonholes and embroidery stitches. So on this particular thing, we're doing a buttonhole, so we are gonna thread that little hole. And just pull it through there. And that's, that's what that hole's for, is to make refined stitches for buttonholes and embroidery. And then I'm going to actually loosen my tension so it's lined up with the red, but I'm going to move it down to a three. So it's just a tiny bit looser. Okay, then um, I'm gonna use the buttonhole foot. I'll have these up front. Um, it has two grooves on the bottom, so that allows for the thickness of the stitches to fit underneath, because when you do a buttonhole, um, I can actually create a fancier buttonhole with this foot, but it leaves space for that corded buttonhole to fit under. So if, if you look at the bottom, if you compare those two, you can see the two little grooves on the buttonhole foot and the regular presser foot it has a little space there and then it pushes flat. That's why sometimes your stitches will get stuck right in this little groove right there. Okay, now I am ready to begin. So here's my mark that I put on. I'm gonna take that mark and I'm going to stick it so that this line going across lines up with this little groove on the side there. Okay, so it's gonna line up right there. Now my center line my, the middle of my capital I is going to line up with this center here. Okay. Now, the next setting, so now this is already, if you look at this, you can see the uh, buttonhole setting. So if I just push zero, it brings up stitch number 10, and then it has this little outline of a buttonhole there. And this kind of shows you what step you're on as you're going. So I'm going to just start right here, and it's going to... I'm going to make sure this center line stays lined up with that middle toe. Okay, when I see this line that's going across, as soon as I hit that line, 
I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna push right here, I'm gonna push the back stitch button once. Make sure you only push it once, push it in hard enough that it can fill it, but if you push it more than once, you can skip steps. So only push it once. It's not gonna look like it changes until I start sewing again. I don't know why, but that's just not what it does. So it's gonna stitch the, it's gonna stitch this backwards. Just a straight stitch backwards. And then when it gets to the other end, right there, as soon as I hit the top of the button, I'm gonna push this again. Push, now it's going to, it's, so it just went backwards, but until I start stitching, it's not gonna show you, but it's gonna stitch this line right there. Okay, and then it's gonna stick and then it's gonna go forward. So we're still on that little line right there. Now when you're doing this, make sure you just let the machine kind of do the work, but watch it and make sure that those that those stitches don't interlink because that'll ruin your buttonhole. You want to make sure there's a space between the two rows of stitches. Okay, as soon as those two edges are matching, then I am going to push the back stitch button again. It's gonna pop to this. See, as soon as I start stitching, it's gonna pop to that. Okay, now, that's what my buttonhole looks like when it's finished. Okay, so this is what we're checking for. My buttonhole looks beautiful, but I don't know if it fits. And it's really important to know whether your button fits. And so we're going to take this buttonhole and we are going to open it. So I'm going to show you a couple ways to open it. Uh, you can either use, like I have these fancy button scissors and I can fold it in half and cut it open, but I'm going to show you how you can do it without those. So I'm going to take the tip of my seam ripper and fold the button in half, buttonhole in half. So I just stick the tip in and make sure before you cut it, there's a little razor blade right there, but if I just cut it straight without sticking it in both sides, I can end up cutting it too far. So I'm gonna stick it in, stick the point into the back of the buttonhole so it comes out. And so it folds the buttonhole in half and then my little razor on my seam ripper just kind of cuts it open. Okay, so there it is. Okay, now if it leaves little hanging, if it leaves a lot of hanging threads, we can put some fray check on it or something. You can take your scissors and cut it out. But if you do a good job on the buttonhole, there shouldn't be a lot of hanging strings in the middle. Okay. All right, so once we get that, so you're gonna do three of these and then you're gonna come and show me before you stitch it. Now I'm gonna test it and when you guys bring it to me, you need to bring the buttonhole samples and the button because I want to test the size of the button and make sure it's a good size. It's a good fit. It should fit snug. There should be a little bit of resistance when I put it in. If it goes through really easy, it's too big. If it goes through not easy enough, it's too small. So this one's feeling like it's just about right. There's a tiny bit of resistance, but it's fitting pretty well.